We have some introductions that are very, very important before we enjoy this wonderful brunch. So everyone, welcome. Welcome as we celebrate, well, I'm going to use the word commencement, not retirement, of Rabbi Robert Pillivan. He's going to be beginning his new life after 19 years here we finally gave him a pass that he can leave reluctantly but we agree that what we will have forever in our hearts and our minds are memories of a wonderful man who was a spiritual leader for all in a group setting or one-on-one -on -one. he was also our friend and he took care of us as a family and each one of us was as equally important as the next and I'm sure you all agree with that I'm going to introduce some people you could save your applause when I'm done Joining Rabbi Pillivan, we have some other distinguished rabbis. We have Rabbi Ken Brotkin, who is going to assume the role that Rabbi Pillivan is vacating. A lot of us have met him. He'll be up here in a minute. We also have Rabbi Moshe Berger, Rabbi Baruch Hazanov, Rabbi Richard Fagan, Rabbi Mendy Rosenfeld, Rabbi Daniel Sayana, Rabbi Shmuley Volovic. So what does that tell you? The guy made a lot of friends over the years, I'll tell you that much. He was very well received, everybody knows him, and I've been meeting people, neighbors who belong to other synagogues, and they are saying, oh, he's finally leaving. But again, he will never leave our hearts and minds. We also have some dignitaries here. We have Mayor Susan Cohen. You can raise your hand. We're not going to ask you to stand up. You do all of that, Susan, all the time. Deputy Mayor Marianne Musick, right next to her. And then we have the rabbi's family, of course. We have, of course, Maxine Pullivan. Now you go to the We have Moshe Pullivan. And I'll tell you, we're going to miss this guy because every, every Shabbos and we have Kiddush and we kibitz. And uh, if you ever had the opportunity to sit with him one on one, he really is absolutely fascinating. He has some wonderful passions about his life and for people. And I'm sure he will come visit us like everyone else will. We have daughter Hannah with her husband, David Charlton, and their children, Gil and Shai. And we have daughter Sarah and her husband, husband Asher Field. Raise your hand. I understand they live in Brooklyn now, but I, somebody told me they may be moving to Jersey. I'm not sure if it's around here, but... If we need help for a minion, we know where, we know where to find Asher. We also have some visiting dignitaries from far and wide, namely the rabbi's brothers, James, Richard, and Stanley. And I understand they came down here on their Holly Davidsons. Right? So once again, Allison, once again, uh, I'd like to thank all the guests who come from far and wide and near, and all of us had lumps in our throat at services. You know what? My wife started to cry when at one point on Friday night, Rabbi Pelevin took his talus off and gave it to Rabbi Brodkin. That really hit us. The transition is real, the transition is lovely, and it's beautiful. So thank everyone for coming. I'm going to ask Rabbi Brotkin to come up now to give us an invocation.
Rabbi Brockton. Thank you very much, Vic. I feel very privileged to be here today, and I feel privileged to have earned the friendship of Rabbi Pilavin over the past number of months. And as we say farewell, I want to share my prayer, my tefillah with the community, that we will continue to emulate the attributes of Rabbi Pilavin long after his tenure. We're going to be reflecting on a couple decades of extraordinary community service, but I believe that there is an enduring theme throughout all of the memories that we're going to share, and that is Rabbi Pilavin's remarkable character traits. Chazal, the Mishnah, teach us that the Jewish people are recognized as the children of Avraham because we are Rachmanim, Baishanim, Vagom, Lechasadim. We are merciful, we are modest, and we do acts of kindness. And honestly, it's hard to think of a single person, a single Jew, who epitomizes these character qualities as much as Rabbi Bob Pilavin. In the time that we have gotten to know each other, Rabbi Pilavin has whispered in my ear, literally and figuratively, on a number of occasions, sharing with me his, his feeling, his desire, to, that there should be compassion for certain individuals that he knows in the community. What he feels for other people is palpable. And when it comes to modesty, there is not an egotistical bone in Rabbi Pilavin's body. In every community conversation, Rabbi Pilavin is solely focused on the well-being of people and the community and the kahila, and not in his own kavod, his own honor. And finally, not only have I personally been a beneficiary of Rabbi Pilavin's kindness and Maxine's kindness in their own home when they hosted me in February, but the rabbi has really paved the way in kindness for me to become part of this community, sharing words at every opportunity in public and private conversations to endear myself, endear others to one another, and I must tell you, this is a very, very unique way to come in as a rabbi. And I have to say, it's a, it's a pretty awesome thing. And it just never would have been possible without you welcoming me to Sons of Israel. So that's an amazing way to come in. It's going to be a very meaningful day for all of us. And as we relive the memories, may we absorb the lesson of Torah attributes that Rabbi Bob Pilavin exemplifies for all of us. Thank you. While you're sitting, I'd like you to turn around and look at the screen. We have a draw Torah from someone who most of us know, Rabbi Jeffrey Miller, who for a short time occupied the pulpit. And he was so kind enough to send us this message so we can all enjoy.
to the dynastic ruling class, he creates the Kohanic class. And thus, Moshe's brother Aaron and his descendants are elevated for all of eternity. This angered the rest of the tribe of Levi, for even as they were elevated above the rest of Israel in terms of their functions as religious leaders, it was still subservient to Aaron and his descendants, the Kohan. And certainly it angered Reuben, who was the eldest son of Israel, saw themselves as first among peoples of the tribe. And it's this disgruntled band that approached Moshe and Aaron with their complaint. They combine together and they come against Moshe and Aaron and they say, You've gone too far. And the very next passage of the Torah says, By Ishma Moshe, that he pull upon us. Moshe hears and he falls flat on his face. Most people pick up on the Moshe's reaction. But let's ask the question, where's Aaron in all of this? After all, he was standing there alongside Moshe. He's the new Kohen Gandalf. Why is his reaction not recorded in the Hodesh? The Ramban explains, Ki Aaron in Mosaro in Dushaka lo anadavar v'kola machokis hazeh. According to Ramban, Aaron in his modesty and in his holiness didn't utter a single word of exchange in his entire controversy. Is that a jab at Moshe Rabbeinu? Is Moshe not humble? Is he not holy? Doesn't the Torah in fact say about Moshe, that each Moshe, Adam, 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 the man Moses was more humble than any other person on the face of the planet? I suggest that you know it. It's not a one size fits all we got. Ibn Israel is telling us what was in Aaron HaKohen's mind. Korah's stature, according to Aaron, as viewed by the Ibn Ezra, was indeed greater than Aaron. Aaron felt genuinely that he was not the greatest choice to be the Kohen God. And yet, he is seated at the request of Moshe Rabbeinu on the order of the Kaddish Baruch. And let's assume for a moment that this is true as seen by Ahara. This is a false modesty. That Ahara saw himself as not the best man for the job. Still, said the Ramban, his amigos, his greatness of modesty, was that he was ready to assume the mantle, knowing he might not be the perfect man for the job, because he was chosen by Moshe and chosen by the Kaddish Baruch. That is what made him holy, and that is what made him modest. And Moshe Rabbeinu, the most modest man who ever walked the face of the earth, he knew full well that he was indeed the best man for the job. He knew that he was unlike everybody else. Moshe Rabbeinu had no ego deficiency. Indeed, Moshe stood there when the Kaddish Baruch Hu chastised Aaron and Miriam. And he said, God said to the three of them, really to Aaron and Miriam in Moshe's presence, if I make myself known to other people as Nevi'im, I do so in a vision, in a dream. I do so cryptically. This is not the way I treat Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is different from every other person. With him, I speak mouth to mouth plainly without wills. Aaron was hearing this. Certainly he feels humble. And perhaps that carries over to his interaction with Korah. Moshe's humility was that he understood that every benefit and strength that he possessed, and even every physical impediment that he had, were gifts of Akash Baraka. Moshe's amigos, his humility, was that he saw himself as a messenger of Akash Baraka. And he saw his accomplishments not as personal, but he saw them as the will of Akash Baraka. Moshe fights for God's glory, 
not the self-aggrandizement. And I suggest that such is the dual lesson of successful leadership. At one and the same time, we have to appreciate that there are others that are equally capable, perhaps even more capable than we are. But a great leader assumes the mantle because he's been chosen by the Kadesh despite his shortcomings and weaknesses. That's the style of Ahara. And then there's the style of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, who fights because he has God-given talent for the betterment of his people, not for his own pocket. It's not easy for either a Moshe or an Ahara, for a great leader to retire and to walk away. It's not easy for a great ball player to hang up his cleats. It's not easy to know when the time has come to pass the role to somebody else. Your rabbi, Rabbi Philip, for many years, has served as both Aharon and his Moshe. He's been humbled the way Aharon is humbled, and he's also been a lover of peace and a chaser of peace in Olaf Shalom and Erodev Shalom in the spirit of Aharon. And he is not humble in the way Moshe Rabbeinu is humble. He appreciates the talent that he has, and he's eager to share them with the love that is Balabatim, to share a Baruch's power. You, congregation, sons of Israel, have been blessed to have Rabbi Philippin in your midst of the Marta after for so many years. May he be blessed in retirement, and may you be blessed moving forward with another rabbi of equal stature. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We have one more order of business, and then we're going to eat, okay? Uh, this young lady next to me, well, you all know me, I'm Vic, the executive director. I've been here for five years. Well, 20 years ago when I joined, they would be here three days a year. Now I'm here about three times a day. When I retired, my wife said, find something to do. I married you for better or for worse, not for lunch. So I came here, and I've been so much enjoying it. One of the reasons that this organization gets along so well is because of this young lady, Allison Robinson. <laughs> Allison, we all know we, we would spend hours just explaining one-on-one -on -one how much she does, and we love her. So she's going to help us as we ask you all to stand. We're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner and then Hot Tech for her. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light why so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through
ladies and gentlemen, brunch is served. Now, we all can't go up at once, but you can sit and enjoy yourselves. Omelet station, all the food, all the drinks you want. Enjoy. And a little bit later on, we have some other wonderful presentations. As my Neapolitan Bobby would say, bon appetit. Together with Deputy Mayor Mary Ann Musich. Come on up. Jersey, 
and Rabbi Pullivan is an avid pianist. Whereas the rabbi will be retiring this year after 19 years of service to Congregation Sons of Israel. Whereas Rabbi Pillivan and the Township of Malvin have always maintained a very close working relationship. We thank the rabbi for his participation in our town events when called upon, and also including the Township Committee in the Shul events. Now therefore, be able to claim the nice Susan Collin Mayor of the Township of Malvin, along with Deputy Mayor Mary Ann Lucid, to hereby call upon the residents of Manalbin and the members of Congregation Sons of Israel to recognize Rabbi Robert Pullivan for his outstanding service to the community. We wish him well on his well-deserved retirement. May he enjoy more time with his wife, Maxine, his children, Hannah, Moshe, and Sarah, and of course, his grandchildren, Gil and Shai. We have further proclaimed that we extend our mazel tov to the entire Pullivan family and thank them for supporting the rabbi as he devoted his time to make a community a better place to live. In witness whereof, I appear to set my hand, cause the seal of the township of Manalpin to be fixed here too on the 26th day of June, 2022. Yes, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Susan. I'm Mary Ann. Oh, wait a minute. The other coffee talks about my golf game. Welcome, Why? Yeah. Hello. 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 Once again, a nice big round of applause for our mayor. He is always there for us. At this time, I'd like to invite up our outgoing president, Mr. Stephen Cast. Let me hear your applause. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Cohn, Deputy Mayor Music. Most of you know me as a man of few words who does not like to hear himself speak, so I'll, to keep things moving, I'll try to be brief. While we are all here to celebrate and honor the career of Rabbi Pillivan and his lovely wife, Maxine, for their success at Sons of Israel, I would be remiss if I did not first mention to give kudos for some of those who have been, a who have been able to make this happen. First off, and primarily, I would like to thank all of you who are here today for making it, at least in my 35 years here at the shul, the most successful in-person fundraising event ever. In fact, it's been so successful as it's given me some ideas. As many of you know who have worked with me on the board these past four years, I'm always scrambling to think of new ways to raise money for the shul. So this even got me to thinking, why mess around with the measly sums we garner from raising Yisker book fees and plaque fees? We just need to have more going away parties. So I have decided that this Thursday, June 30th, in honor of my last day of office, we're going to have a going away party for me. <laughs> Cost to you will be cheap, only $10 each, payable personally to me. You have to bring your own chairs, because we sure as hell cannot afford to rent these once again. In return, you get to enjoy a veritable cornucopia of food from this weekend's events, including cold Chinese food, rock hard bagels, with moldy cream cheese and leftovers from today. I'll even throw in a case of three buck chuck for all you to share. Then every other weekend going forward, we get someone else to leave and have a party. By year's end, our problems will be solved. Seriously, it has been my honor and privilege to represent you members of our shul for my service on the board. It has not been a one-man show these past four years. It was a team effort of many talented and dedicated individuals, all working together for the benefit of our shul. Although not a member of our board, uh, I would like to thank this gentleman here, Mr. Vic Schiappo, as our executive director and business director. I, I want everyone to know going forward that you can rest assured that our new board of directors, led by a very dedicated and capable Jay Fields, that our shul is in good hands. Besides our board of directors, there are a number of other individuals who working on various subcommittees have, have had an impact on the future of our school. 
Our rabbi search committee, spearheaded by Ms. Bonnie Leff, did a fantastic job in conducting at times a long and frustrating process that has brought us the new and future spiritual leader of our shul, Rabbi Kenneth Brodkin. Thanks to all of you for a magnificent effort. Today's affair could not have been the success it, it has become if not for the efforts of other dedicated individuals spearheaded by Ms. Barbara Zega. Your efforts have been rewarded for our most successful and enjoyable in-person event to date, thanks to you all. Least I forget them, I do not want to leave out John Lowry and Mike Buck, who have spent many hours toiling away, as they do all year long, to help make this, all this weekend's event successful. Last and certainly not least, our mutual and sincere thanks to Allison Robinson, without whom none of these weekend events could have happened, but many other activities of the show, of the show could not have occurred as well. Dear, dear Rabbi Pilvin, let me start by saying thank you for your kind, considerate, honest, unsolicited words praising me yesterday. By the way, my check for you is waiting in your office mailbox. I hope you accept rubles. One thing you did comment on how unprecedented the two years my presidency was because of COVID. I would like to say the same, the same about you. I'm sure that while you were attending rabbinical school, you had no idea that your future would include Zoom minions, delivering sermons while wearing a mask and looking like the Lone Ranger, staring at people through fogged up glasses, and using hand sanitizer every time you shook someone's hand. Far more than me or the board, the last two years have been far more difficult to attend to your duties than it has been for us. You have done a remarkable job, nonetheless, as you have throughout your 18 years career here. So everybody knows Rabbi Pelvin has been the longest serving rabbi that our shul has had in over its 100 year history. You have been a stalwart, a rock during that entire period. Lest we not forget, you could have not done so without the love, support, and effort of your wife, Maxine. I am sure, I'm sure if you were up here, you would be the first one to agree with me. Having a sympathetical partner makes life and all it brings much more bearable in times of woe and more joyous in times of success. Congratulations to both of you as you begin your new journey forward. As someone brilliant once said, maybe it was me, <laughs> may your future life be as a problem in arithmetic. Joys added, sorrow subtracted, luck multiplied, and love divided. May God, God grant you both and your entire family the future happiness and success all of you deserve. And now I'll take questions from the audience. Oh, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Vic, I thought this was a congregational meeting. No, we've okay. been through those. Though. Okay. All right. You know what that is, right? Yes. And now what I'd like to present to Rabbi Pilovin, if you mind coming up. Since you've been such a major part of our shul for so many years, we want you to continue to be part of our shul. This special plaque, the Robert, Rabbi Robert Pilovin, Beth Amidrash, and Library. Congratulations. And now, without uh, any further delay, I'd like to introduce Ms. Nancy Berger. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. I was extremely honored to be asked to speak today as we bid Rabbi Pilovin and his family a farewell from Congregation Sons of Israel. Most of today's celebration is centered on you, Rabbi Pilovin. However, as many of us believe and know, behind every great man is a great woman. Maxine, that woman is you. I don't remember if you remember Maxine, I don't know if you remember Maxine, but the first time we met was a few days after you moved into Manalapan in your first home on Kilmer Drive. You lived a few houses from my family, next door to Joe and Gidon Freud, and across the street from Beth and Joel Krinsky. I was then the president of Sisterhood 
coming to welcome you and your entire family and your children were much younger then, <laughs> to Sons of Israel and to the Manalpan community. Approximately 19 years have passed since that meeting and here we are in extremely different phases of our lives. Very early in your tenure here, you established yourself in the congregation as a scholar and a teacher. You started a variety of educational activities, including an adult bat mitzvah class and ceremony, regular adult education classes, and study sessions in your home. These were extremely enjoyable and very educational. You always presented yourself in a dynamic, energetic way. You also delivered multiple Devorah Torahs on Friday evenings, and all included group participation and discussion, expanding everyone's mind and knowledge. You also were one of the key people in assisting the sisterhood several years ago in koshering all of the kitchens. Do you remember the countless people we had assisting, making multiple trips back and forth to the minion, to, to the minion, to the mikvah, and deciding, do we keep this? Do we throw it away? Does it go here? Does it go here? What was worth saving and what was not? And most of that was because of your efforts, and we thank you for that. You were also instrumental in be beginning the chillant cook-offs. Were any of you here involved in the chillant cook-offs? Maxine, I'm told you played a very big part of that, and I don't know that because I don't do chillant. However, it occurred multiple times over the past many years, and these events were fun and delicious. On a more personal level, you and your husband have always been there for my husband, my family, and me, both in good times and in bad. Through multiple hard times, when we least expected it, I would get a phone call or text message from you letting me know that food was on the way. When I couldn't answer the door, a meal or two or three were left on my doorstep along with explicit directions for warming, refrigerating, serving. My children could not believe how much food came from your home. In addition to this, we received many great recipes. In fact, Jody this morning said, gee, what about that zucchini? What was it, the zucchini? Something zucchini. I said, don't worry, we've got the recipe. And new ways to prepare some of our more common meals. Billy and I also had the privilege of dining with you and your family in your home on multiple occasions. We enjoyed wonderful conversations, both secular and religious in nature. We are aware that these meals were not only reserved for us, but also for a multitude of other congregants as well. One of the things that I have enjoyed most related to you, Maxine, are your monthly articles in The Voice entitled, from my perch. I could relate to many of them. I especially enjoyed this last one entitled, Goodbye. As I reflected on your words, I realized some similarities to when my own family moved to this community a very long time ago. For me, it was as a 12-year-old. You shared in your article we were struck by an abundance of cornfields. When my family moved to the other side of Route 9 on Church Road in Morganville, there was nothing but cornfields across the street from our house. In your article, you quoted Hannah. Hannah said, this is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I remember my mother, my mother saying to my father, you took us to the end of the world. There are other similarities between you and me. We're both educators by trade, and I know that you are both starting your lives together in retirement, as Billy and I will be in 11 more days. <laughs> you are now getting your husband back in full force due to retirement. I hope that you and Rabbi Pillivan are looking forward to this. 
Maxine, I will end this mini tribute to you with the words that you included in your last On My Perch. I agree that the word goodbye is so very formal. So in your words, let us say shalom. May peace, as well as love, and friendship, and health, and happiness be a part of your family's life moving forward. Billy, Jody, Alan, and I, as well as the rest of the community and the congregation, wish you and the rest of the Pillivan family the best that life has to offer. One that is wonderful, happy, healthy, surrounded by family and friends. Thank you, Maxine, for all that you have shared and experienced with us as the Rebbitson of Congregation Sons of Israel for the past two decades. Please come up and join me, and we'd like you to accept these flowers on behalf of the congregation. We all wish you, we all wish you the best that life has to offer. And it's so nice seeing your extended family here and congratulations, Mazel Tov, to all of you as well. Okay, so now I'd like to, to um, introduce Maurice Zaga, or is it Zaga these days? Zaga, Zaga. Maurice is a past president of our congregation he is currently the Vice President of House, and he is someone who has held so many positions here in the building. And he is here to offer some words um, regarding Rabbi Pillivan. Maurice. First, I'd like to uh, apologize. I mean, someone in the plaque business should have at least had this done in bronze. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> had no pull on that one. Um, you all know me as a mush, so you'll have to deal with that. Good morning and welcome. It's wonderful to see you in this room filled in a capacity to wish and congratulate Rabbi on his retirement, and it is my honor to have been asked to say a few words. Our family, the Zaga family, Zaga, <clears throat> have been members for over 30 years, and I've been a board member on and off, mostly for the last 20. 19 years ago, this congregation was blessed with the leadership of Rabbi Pope. How could we have known that 19 years ago, a divine plan was set in place, culminating with the honoring of our rabbi today. A little more on that later. There are many aspects of my relationship with Rabbi Pillivan, and I look back on them all fondly. I see him as a pillar whom I have reached out to in good times <clears throat> and in times of mourning. As a leader to offer a perspective, and as a friend to share life with. Before getting into the kosher meat of my comments about our rabbi, I know this is a dairy event, <clears throat> but we are under rabbinic supervision, I would like to say a few words about Maxine. Over the de last decade, Maxine and I have had many in-depth conversations on many topics, even some about Rabbi Pillivan. I've seen the unshielded Maxine, a courageous, intelligent, thoughtful, and generous woman. You're a fantastic teacher. Maxine, I truly enjoy our conversations, your Monday classes, and our time together. And since I became president, I was not able to attend, but you know all about that. I look forward to a continuation of our friendship. Being a board member, we, as board members, are subject to the comments from the congregants about our rabbi. 10 different people, 20 different opinions, and once I became president, I saw the side of being a rabbi that I was not fully aware of. 
I was at the start of my term as president when we heard of the tragedy at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Rabbi and I discussed the need to gather our community in solidarity. In less than 48 hours, our community gathered along with the spiritual leaders from many local religious institutions in a show of communal support. Some thought it couldn't be done in such a short time, but not with this rabbi. He did not stop. We went, we went at it, and we accomplished it. And what followed was that rabbi created an interfaith gathering that still, on occasion, meets to encourage community growth, acceptance, and cooperation. Another one. Over the past 10 years, the daily morning and evening meeting has become exceedingly difficult to maintain. Most of you have received many calls and minion app texts at all hours of the day and night from rabbi asking you for you, to, for you to participate. If you do the math, a number of times, at a minimum, 10 calls a day, six days a week, 365 days a year, at school shop is though. It's over 20,000 calls times 10 years. He has single-handedly kept Verizon and Armenian in business. Fast forward to COVID of 2020, an incredibly challenging time for us all. Everything came to a stop in the time that prayer was most needed for the health of our community and ourselves personally. Rabbi Pillivan has kept our spirituality going through daily calls to all the congregants, virtual gatherings, and allow the congregants to find a sense of community during the difficult times with virtual meetings. And as president, I've spent many hours in person on the phone speaking with Rabbi Pillivin. It was common for me to find members of our congregation in his office day or night. It was in these times that I truly learned How involved the rabbi is, he's in in integrated into all the lives from birth to death of everyone in this room. Something to watch. Sorry. <laughs> As president of the congregation, you step into a world when you inevitably learn of the trials and tribulations of your community. These moments were perfect opportunities for me to seek out guidance from Rabbi. He has never failed to impress me with his insight, thoughtfulness, and with his help, I was able to share his wisdom. These interactions have opened my eyes to the beautiful and vast impact that the clergy has on our congregation. Okay, I gotta light this up. <laughs> Some of you know that we uh, tend to um, venture out of the sanctuary during services. <laughs> so there's this one occasion that, you know, a whole bunch of us are in the kitchen and a uh, rabbi comes storming into the room and he looks around and he, he sees me, he goes, Moise, do you want to go to heaven? And I say, of course I want to go to heaven. And he says, well, then go stand by that wall. And he turns to Mike and Jay and, well, that's my cats, and Mike and Jay and, and Billy and whoever else in the room. And he says, you all want to go to heaven? He goes, of course, but yes, Rabbi. And we're all standing there embarrassed that he should come in and see us drinking. And he says, go stand by the wall. And then he turns to Mike Leibowitz. And Mike is standing by the wall. He just keeps talking and talking and talking, but there's nobody there because we're all against the wall. He says, Mike, Mike. Mike turns his wife. Turns and looks at us against the wall. He says, Mike, do you want to go to heaven? Mike looks at us, turns back at the head of the rabbi. He says, no. <laughs> the rabbi is aghast. He says, what do you mean, no? Don't you, when you die, don't you want to go to heaven? He goes, of course I want to go to heaven. But I thought you would want us to all go now. <laughs> <laughs> so, rabbi, I apologize to you for not inviting you. <laughs> and for being somewhat disrespectful. So back in 2004, my son and I were in Boy Scout camp in the Sangro de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico. Uh, there is a segue here, trust me. 
On this night, we were gazing at the stars, enjoying the beautiful and untouched beauty of nature. At this moment, I realized how blessed we were for our lives and the journey allowing us to have this opportunity. And with that thought in mind, I'm making the same announcement today. We are blessed. I need a drink. <laughs> Hashem works in mysterious ways. Our journey of the last 19 years with Rabbi Pilvin has most definitely been divinely guided. In January of 2020, we embarked on, a, on making a significant change to CSI to return to our roots as an Orthodox congregation. Now, just as we started the rabbinic search, COVID stopped us. At the end of 2020, we tried it again. We found someone, but Hashem again stepped in and said, he's not the right person. And in 2022, we found Rabbi Brodkin, and our journey starts. Thinking back on the last 19 years <laughs> with Rabbi Pilvin, his message as our spiritual leader has always been one of encouragement. <clears throat> encouragement towards a path of religious enrichment and observance. In, its way, in, a, in a way, it's ironic that at the time of Rabbi's retirement, our congregation has now embarked on a challenging journey. Credit must be given to the lay people involved finding Rabbi Brodkin. However, without Rabbi Pilgrim's assistance towards this change, So this change of direction, I'm, sure, I'm not sure we could have made it successful. At every opportunity, Rabbi spoke to the congregation with compassion, truly believing that this change was for the benefit of our shul and community. He was gracious in the personal compromises he made in an effort to ensure our success. He spoke sincerely with clarity, supporting this path for the shul. He was a voice which enabled an overwhelmingly approval of the congregation to make the change. There was not anyone more supportive or influential in this change than Rabbi Hill. And I stand here today in awe of Hashem's mysterious guidance to say, we too have been blessed. Blessed to have had Rabbi Hill as our leader. I want to thank Rabbi and his wife for guidance, friendship, support, and support that you have given me personally and to my family. In this final week that Rabbi and Maxine will be in Manalpan, they will finally be fulfilling their dream, lifelong dream of making Aliyah to Highland Park. <laughs> So I looked up the word shalom, and as we know, it means hello and goodbye, and as well as peace. But it also means completeness, fulfillment, soundness, welfare, well-being, <clears throat> contentment, and much more. So here is wishing you and Maxine happiness and health and shalom in your retirement. We have a culture saline IV drip waiting for you. <laughs> so now I get the privilege of announcing, of bringing up the next speaker. Um, I've spoken to the family, and it's been decided that it's going in chronological order. I know the Bill and family pretty well. I've spent time with them um, pretty often. And um, it's my pleasure to say they're my friends, all of them, the whole family. And I'd like to bring up Hannah, because she's the oldest daughter, and I think maybe the favorite child as of right now until the next one comes up. <laughs> Hannah.
Um, one night many years ago, I recall being anxiety ridden about an oral presentation I was giving in class the next day. I proclaimed dramatically, do you have any idea what it's like to stand up and talk in front of a whole room of people? <laughs> you paused for a moment and said, well, I have a little experience in this area. A few decades later, I still find this very intimidating. Let me just liken the experience of me standing in front of your show and trying to deliver beautifully articulated and eloquently delivered comments about you to your coming into my kitchen to bake me a hollow with a filling and a six grand braid. One of us weaves tails, one of us weaves dough. Well, let's give this a try. In Herkea Vote, The Ethics of the Fathers, Shammai says, and more ma'at, say little, but say harbe, and do much. Some of us embrace the and more ma'at part, and some of us like to talk a little more. But with all due respect to Shammai, I would put a slight variation on this concept, because I believe your words are actually what do a lot. Whether you are teaching Torah from the Bima on Shabbat, or at the weekly class you taught at the local pizza place for several years, whether words of comfort to a mourner, or words of love to a couple under the chuppah, whether words of advice to a confidant fallen on tough times, or a call to celebrate a congregant's 47th wedding anniversary and to ask how their macha tennister's daughter's first cousin is doing after a recent surgery in York Dartmouth that you somehow knew about and remembered. Your words show how much you care. I know that I can always count on your ear and your insights when I need to talk, even about issues more complex than a book report. I am always impressed by the power of your words. Even if, even if you don't have the exact right advice, you still find a way to comfort me. You have the ability to take the most mundane words and transform them into elegance. You somehow manage to hold our rapt attention with a story, though we've probably heard it at least nine times, and we know some facts may or may not have been embellished for entertainment purposes. You can even take something that sounds negative and wordsmith it into a positive. After all, you didn't become a senior citizen this year. You became eligible for the senior discount. <laughs> I obviously won't tell it as well, but you have a story about visiting a man who was not forthcoming with information on his recently deceased wife. Using what little material you had, you somehow delivered a eulogy so inspiring, you had the crowd exclaiming, Amen, and the husband moved to tears. If I could only have given you my speech to edit, you would be sounding like Superman by now. If only, right? According to the Midrash, in this week's Torah portion, one of the challenges with which Korach confronts Moshe is whether the doorpost of a room with a safer Torah, such as a synagogue, requires a mezuzah. After all, the Shema prayer written on the scroll of the mezuzah is already contained within the Torah. He maintains that the people are all holy because God is among them, alleging that innate holiness should be enough. However, Moshe argues the trappings of holiness are insufficient. One must lead a conspicuous Torah life. Regardless of what is on the inside, you still need that mezuzah on the outside. Abba, I believe you wholly embrace this idea of living your Jewish life with enthusiasm and devotion. I might have thought my little Shiloh could have been answered with a simple yes or no. You might think it requires racing off to pull six or seven farm off the shelves and emailing me just a few more resources over the next couple of weeks. I might have thought a rainy Sunday would be a good excuse to watch TV. You thought it was a wonderful opportunity to instead have me open a homage and have me write down as many reasons as possible as to why Moshe Rabbeinu was not allowed to enter the land of Israel. And then you might talk about it for the next 25 years. Yeah. And you still have the original page of Daniel. Yeah. I might consider you taking me to the mall to shop for a dress for Moshe's bar mitzvah to be just that. You might take the opportunity to read clothing tags to collect material for that week's sermon. I heard you may have done something similar when going out to a movie with Ema on a rare date night. Sometimes it's okay to leave the notebook at home. 
I might think a simple call to wish a mazel tov would suffice. You would consider musical accompaniment and as many harmony parts as are available to be more appropriate to the occasion. Though I must admit, my birthday is not complete until I pick up the phone to hear that familiar piano intro. Abba, your compassion and understanding, your optimism and enthusiasm, your warmth and sense of humor, your dedication to family, friends, and Judaism, May you continue, continue to use your words and many other talents to motivate and inspire those who are lucky enough to know you for the next 55 years to come. Muscle tell we love you. med student in college, and I know that this is generally the Jewish mother line, but if you'll allow me a, a bit of a role reversal for a moment. Could have been a doctor! <laughs> um, instead, you chose a 24-hour job saving people emotionally and spiritually, a job that pays much less, has many more demands, with oftentimes a lot less gratitude. Am I selling the revenue or what? Um, I have always been my father's daughter. Uh, according to my mother, usually accompanied with an eye roll or a sigh, um, from uh, people commenting on my looks, which is great because it's every young woman's dream to be told she resembles a shorter Jewish Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> As uh, Rabbi Broughton mentioned, modesty. Some might even say I'm more modest. Um, thank you for the two laughs. Um, but those things aside, here are some of the qualities I hope people are referring to when they say that I'm my father's daughter. Uh, dedication in all things, work, family, and Torah. Uh, seeing the humor in life and bringing levity to uh, much needed situations, hopefully with a bit more discretion. Um, going out of the way to greet strangers and ensure that they are welcomed into the fold. And making music when there is none. Uh, speaking of music, as the famous Randy Newman said, short people got no reason to, oh no, Wrong quote, I'm so, so, so sorry. Um, I don't know how that got in there. Uh, let me try that again. It's really awkward. Um, speaking of music, uh, I'd like to recite a prayer upon your retirement. As God blessed our ancestors on their journeys, so may you be blessed as you embark on the journey of your retirement. May you find rest and challenge, quiet and adventure. May you be sustained by the achievements of your work life, and inspired by the possibilities of what lies ahead. May you allow yourself to experience silence and rest, and may you open yourself to the new music that may emerge from that silence. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We love you, Allah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, allow well, I me mean, to introduce Moshe. about superheroes and their Jewish creators. We had many discussions about Stan Lee, a.k.a. Stanley Lieber, and Jack Kirby, a.k.a. Jacob Kurtzberg, and the Marvel Universe, 
Wait. And we also liked talking about Bob Kane, aka Robert Kahn and Bill Finger, the creators of Batman, and Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, the creators of Superman. We saw many superhero movies together, including the Thor movies, the Iron Man movies, the Incredibles, and so on and so forth. We've also discussed news about Israel, especially the news from Stand With Us. We learned many new board games during COVID, especially, I especially enjoyed meeting you in Splendor, though you've become more competitive lately, though I think that might have something to do with your uh, overused slogan, decisions, decisions. <laughs> I enjoy asking you many absurd halachic questions. The best of them all is, uh, is it considered separating if you pick your nose on Shabbat? I'm still awaiting the answer to that question. <laughs> I enjoyed our singing at the Shabbat table and harmonizing with you on the songs Asha Kyle and Dero Yikra, so to the tune of Sloop John B, and Shira Malo, and many more. We bonded over the music Schlagrock, a group that puts different words to the songs of other artists. I remember shortly after hearing Schlagrock's song, Help Me Rom Bom, I would hear, I then some time later as a kid, heard the song, Help Me Ronda, by Beach Boys being played on the radio, to which little me would shout, those aren't the right words. <laughs> we would even sing some of Schlagrock's original songs, songs that you would play on the piano, including Am Yisrael Chai and he lay, he nay lo yadum. We had some great times together, and I look forward to many more in your retirement, and in fact, stay tuned for my uh, Purim costume this coming Purim, as a sneak peek. <laughs> Hello. Good in yourself, Steve. BHBH. I cannot do Wednesday, but will Thursday be a window in your schedule? <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay, be well. Call to. Bye bye. <laughs> Mazel tov, Baba. <laughs> thank you, thank you. There's sparks between us. <laughs> and now, of course, we got Maxine. did it happen? The odds were against it. I was working on a master's degree at Yeshiva University. My husband was a rabbinical student at the Jewish Theological Seminary. I was Orthodox. He was going to be a conservative rabbi. Before we got engaged, we had discussions that would have left most onlookers puzzled. Cheese. The conservative movement had recently declared that cheese did not require kosher certification. Would he be willing to eat only cheese with kosher certification? He offered to make his own cheese if necessary. <laughs> we got engaged. <laughs> and then the naysayers came from both sides. My professor at Yeshiva University threw up his hands in defeat at our news. The vice chancellor of the Jewish Theological Seminary called my husband into his office and painted a scenario suspiciously similar to our situation, then asked my husband how he would advise this couple. We were flummoxed. He said he would advise against it. Whatever happened to Mazel Tov? <laughs> well, we flouted the negative predictions. My husband went on to serve traditional conservative shuls for many years, and then Congregation Sons of Israel as an Orthodox <coughs> rabbi with smicha. And now, after 38 years of marriage and the rabbinate, retirement. 19 years, 19 years ago, we came to Manalapan. Where did the time go? We arrived with three teenagers, we were amused by the chickens strutting around in the front yards. 
Hannah and I discovered a hen pacing in front of the dry cleaners one day. The owner called her his mascot. We bought our first home here, saw our daughters married and our son working at a job that he loves, and we experienced the thrill of grandparenthood. Mostly, though, we felt comfortable here. The shul was traditional, the rabbi's rulings were respected. The people were kind and welcoming. We moved into a lovely, immaculate home on Kilmer Drive, and you couldn't beat the walk to shul. So we thank you for your kindness, your support, and most of all, your friendship. Rabinet can be a very lonely place. You will never know how much your friendship has meant. But we know, and we will remember it. To my husband, my advisor, my cheerleader, what more is there to say? We defied the negative predictions. We made it. And you have remained the same generous, talented, cheerful, forgiving, loving person I always knew, although you never made your own cheese. <laughs> I'll never know if I deserve you, but you deserve this honor very much. minutes more we have a little musical presentation so I will invite my children to join me <laughs> yes now that now that you're all in tears we're going to sing Best we've ever 
seen. And you can tell everybody at your new show. the song. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite, re-invite Steve Cass to come up, who's going to invite some of the people for the purposes of major presentation. And by the way, they canceled Thursday's dinner. They're not interested in I didn't think they would be. And now we, I'd like to invite up for a presentation to Rabbi Pilvin, our past presidents who are here with us today, Mr. David Binder. Please come up. Mr. Jerry Ennis. Mr. Mike Leibowitz, Mr. Jeff Lager, Mr. Jay Lilienthal, Mr. Steve Woodrock, Mr. Ray Saw, and last but not least, Mr. Maurice Vega, who spoke so uh, elegantly and emotionally today at this uh, event. Well, will you please come up here for the presentation? Jerry will make the presentation. I wrote a whole big doohickey, but you guys have been sitting for a long time and there's a good dessert. And there isn't very much that hasn't been said about our feelings about Maxine and the rabbi. There's one, one piece, though, that uh, all of us as presidents exercise that the congregation seldom hears about. And that's the rabbi's role in consoling and dealing with families that have lost and the families that grieve. And in this area, we don't talk about it, but we knew for 20 years that we had a person that could handle that, that could handle it with dignity, with stress, and for that, we thank Rabbi Pilgrim, because that's his legacy. His legacy is not his column, as good as it is. His legacy is not his education, as good as it is. His legacy will be two things. One, that he's loved in the Nalapin, as our rabbi, and that he has achieved something that no past president had ever achieved and that is a movement towards more orthodoxy. That is his legacy, and that's a heck of a legacy for a rabbi who started out as a conservative rabbi and then got orthodox smicha, and then counseled the committee and cooperated with the committee to bring a more observant orthodoxy to sons of Israel. And for that, he deserves all of our love and all of our praise. Rabbi? Yeah. Rabbi, why don't you stand here in front of the group? Yeah. Oh, we're having the photo now. <laughs> This is a matzah plate for Shabbos. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> Good? Read it? Yeah. Stand. 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 Stand.
your hearts and in your minds forever. Yeah. Can you see it? On a microscope? It says, in honor of our beloved rabbi, we wish you a happy retirement with sincere appreciation for your faithful service, your friendship, and the difference you have made in the lives of so many. You will always be remembered. Now, as you start the next chapter of your life, rejoice in your accomplishments and a future filled with blessings of good health the joy of good friends, a loving family, and the contentment of a job well done with great affection and gratitude. The officers and members of Congregation Sons of Israel, Manala Pan, New Jersey, <laughs> July 2003 through June 2022. I've been asked whether I would ever consider a career in stand-up. I said, not at this stage. 
sit down comedy, maybe, <laughs> but then we'd still need new jokes. Dear friends, uh, first of all, I want to welcome my uh, accountant, Howard Levine, who is with us all the way from Connecticut. <laughs> Not only because uh, we love him to death, but because uh, for the fall he called, he said, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Uh, about my retirement. He said, oh, when is that? He said, last week. <laughs> <laughs> Howard was our only accountant. I mentioned that uh, because uh, we obviously made some perfunctory statements about how happy we were for him in his retirement. But I must admit that emotionally, I couldn't help but experience it as a little bit of a double cross. He said, uh, after, after 38 years, you're retiring the nerve. <laughs> and then I realized I was seeing from one side of the aisle what I'm now going through on the other. Um, we tend to look at things as they affect us <coughs> and not as uh, they impact on others. Um, today is beautiful. I, I just want to mention a thank you to the uh, past presidents for that lovely presentation. I want to single out for a minute um, Jerry Ennis. After uh, Jerry was instrumental in getting us the advanced news that Hana, who had been waitlisted at U of Maryland, was in fact accepted. And that played a pretty important role in accelerating our decision to come to you. And uh, when I came here, one of the first funerals at the JCC, JCC, well, I'm more, <laughs> Sons of Israel Cemetery, uh, after 19 years of flawless performance, I got a little bit too close to the edge, and in I went. Now, I don't know if you've done most of your thinking at the bottom of an open grave, but the funniest thoughts occurred to you <laughs> while you're there. I look up, and all I see is Jerry Ennis looking down and grinning. <laughs> and among the funny things that occurred to me is that right before me, the image of every president of every congregation I had ever served <laughs> went before me in review. When I found myself thinking, he'd pull me out, he'd throw dirt on me, he'd pull me out. <laughs> Jerry pulled me out, which is why we're here today. <laughs> We never know what God's original plan is for each of us, uh, but sometimes God's contingency plan can be spectacular. Today is plan B. Plan A was for this gala to take place two years from now. Maxine and I would be, uh, I had the speech all written. Max and I, Maxine and I would be marking 40 years of marriage and 40 years in the rabbinate. Speakers would make the obligatory comparisons to the 40 years of Moses. I would modestly reject the comparison. After all, I've seen the movie and I look nothing like Charlton Heston. <laughs> but I do love Charlton. And then last spring, I was approached by Vic Schiappo, our multi-talented ex executive director. Don't try to take it from us, you couldn't afford it. He asked me to consider the mutual benefits of an accelerated time frame. <clears throat> he convinced me, and here we are. I want to first of all thank my predecessor, Rabbi Jeffrey Miller, for his video of our Torah. And I thank my successor, Rabbi Ken Brodkin, for his invocation and for making the trip from Portland, Oregon, to be with us this weekend. We hope that you and your family will keep 40 Gordon's Corner Road a place of uh, spiritual beauty and much joy. I'd like to thank Barbara, Zayn Sakazaga, <laughs> and her committee, Vicki Amron, Bill Berger, Donna Binder, Andrea Friedman, Mindy Fromm, Jackie Glynn, Jill Kellner, Allison Robinson, Sharon and Vic Schiappo, and Shari Tepper. No detail was left out. It was a beautiful, beautiful evening. A afternoon. 
Allison, of course, is our tireless office manager, and for the past 14 years, she has had the Herculean task of keeping me efficient and focused. Administrative note to Rabbi Brodkin, if you're better than I am computers, and you probably are, uh, Allison will ease into semi-retirement. Thank you to John and to Buck, our dedicated maintenance duo. Thank you for the lovely presentations made by our past presidents, Steve Cass, David Binder, Jerry Ennis, Mike Leibowitz, Jeff Pfeiffer, Jay Lilienthal, Steve Litwa, Ray Salt, and Maurice Saga. 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 The other presidents during my tenure were Larry Nidich, Steve Zucker, Mitch Lusgarten, and Steve Wertheim. Another past president, Alan Perlander, chaired the search committee that brought me here, and today's beautiful occasion may be proof that you've finally forgiven him. Past president, Mitch Kaufman, provided me a badly needed once a month reprieve from Torah reading on Shabbat. I'm honored by the presence of the Penelope Township Committee and to Mayor Susan Cohen for a proclamation. For today's photo montage, I'm grateful to both Alan and Marlene Brooker. I thank Alan Brooker for a thousand other photos and videos over the years. Thank you, Brad Mandigo, for today's musical accompaniment. You're going to sound even better in just a few minutes. Before I came to central New Jersey, <clears throat> I spent uh, 60 and unforgettable years at the JCC of Spring Valley, New York. Two of the tables here are filled with friends from JCC days, and I'm honored by your presence. <laughs> Including uh, two past presidents, uh, Carol Modar and Harry Gitlitz, both of whom would have pulled me out. <laughs> For years, our high holidays were blessed by the vocal talents of Dr. Jack Muchnick and family. Uh, the very last minute, uh, due to a COVID exposure, he wasn't able to be with us, but I'm delighted to mention him and uh, his wife, our good friend Robin. For over uh, 30 years, I've been blessed with the spiritual fellowship of the Union for Traditional Judaism. Their rabbinical arm is called Mo Rasha, and I was privileged to serve as president of Mo Rasha for many years. Their good wishes grace the back cover of our journal, and I thank them. One of my great joys for 19 years was our Wednesday morning study group. It met first at Levy's restaurant, which became Capri's. Scott Levy and Avigdor Abramov were gracious hosts. Avigdor, is he with us? He, he was a little bit earlier, but, but as are several mem members of that study group. If you were part of the Wednesday morning study group, please feel free to rise and be acknowledged for a 19-year commitment that you made. I want to salute the staff of Bloomfield Cooper Jewish Chapels. As you can imagine, I work with them very, very often. I've always admired their professionalism and sensitivity in helping the newly bereaved. Uh, finally, we're together for a happy occasion, and so I want to salute you as well. Every Rosh Hashanah, one sermon was always an Israel Bonds appeal. Uh, Linda Schmidt and New Jersey Israel Bonds were a big part of my rabbinic year. And I'm delighted to acknowledge their important work on behalf of Israel and their participation in our journal. For the past decade, we have made Highland Park our summer home and Congregation Abbas Achim our summer shul. The Rabbi Emeritus of Congregation Abbas Achim, uh, Rabbi Ron Schwartzberg, played a very pivotal role in brokering the shidduch between our congregation and Rabbi Brodkin. So we look forward to being full-time residents in the near future and salute our Highland Park friends who are with us today. I also salute Makelat HaMerkaz, the Jewish choir of central New Jersey. Maxine and I were always proud when the choir performed here. 
And uh, it's interesting that choir once brought in a guest conductor, Joshua Jacobson, uh, the founder and the director of the Samir, Samir Chorale of Boston. It was in that choir that uh, I met Maxine, and uh, it was my pleasure to go to the guest conductor with Maxine and to point out to him what can go wrong if you don't chaperone the tenors and the sopranos. <laughs> And now for my biggest fan base, the members of my family. I welcome my brothers, Richie, Jim, and Stan. Give a rise to them. I am old, the oldest of the four and most manifestly the most weather-beaten. Um, whenever we're photographed together, we can practically disprove the field of genetics. We're a UN peacekeeping force. Um, they and my sister-in-law, Annika, are all from New England, and you'll have no trouble locating their ad. It's the one with a motorcycle. My brothers are dealers. No, not that kind of dealer. <laughs> Harley dealers. My folks love to joke that they had four sons, three of whom caused people to pray. <laughs> Oh well, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, Nancy Berger for her presentation to Maxine. Officially, I am the one who is retiring. Unofficially, it's actually Maxine. While she has been a devoted mother and teacher, she has achieved sainthood as a rabbi's wife, a rabbitson. While I'm in shul, you think I turn the lights out Because of the meetings I attend You don't get many nights out, no nights out It is 38, going on 39 years that we have been wed And it is clear to and I'm well fed. It is 38 going on 39 years that you've had to wait. I'm on the phone to find a minion and so far we've just got eight. Totally unprepared for you to be a Rebenson. You're wishing well to Aviel and her man Rabbi Ken. Have been my rock of Gibraltar. I treasure what you do. Now that I'm about to retire, I'll try to take care of you. Of course, Maxine's greatest achievement has been the mother to our three main sources of joy, our grown children, Hannah, Moshe, and Sarah. Maxine, from an early age, impressed upon our daughters the importance of marrying men they could look up to, and that's how we were blessed with David and Asher. <laughs> our sons-in-law have expanded our family to include Amakatanim, Robin, Jeremy, Marvin, Esther, and Ben. Hannah and David made us a Saba and Safta to our grandsons, Gil and Shai. In just a few years, they will be the grandchildren that Maxine and I can look up to. <laughs> I salute my Mitchell and Pillivan cousins, some of whom are with us today. And finally, I salute all the dedicated volunteers who have made Congregation Sons of Israel a premier synagogue. I'd like to wish well to the new board of trustees and its incoming president, Jay Fields. Let me conclude with a song. My days in the show have come to an end, I know. My family and friends, they tell me it's time to go. Urge me 
her a bracha, a heartfelt wish for what we might achieve when I go. to detail stunning. <clears throat> it was because of the committee that you surrounded yourself with and of course their leader, who was you. You shouldn't have given me this job right after that song. <laughs> it is on behalf of a very, very grateful Pilliman family and congregation that we'd like to make this presentation. <laughs> I can hardly wait to see the pictures. You'll have all these people with tears down their face. <laughs> Somebody will ask me, what was that event? No, well, nothing. It was just a funeral I attended. <laughs> Back to Vic. Rabbi Robert Pilliman, our rabbi in our heart, forever. 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 